Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Man, we have so much to be thankful for. God has been extremely kind and loving toward us. Even when we didn't deserve it, he still loved us. When we were still sinning, the Bible said, while we was yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. You was ungodly at one time. And he still had enough love that he wanted to pour out to show you that you are valuable to him. And for that, we can say thank you. For that, we can say thank you. Thank you, Lord. First, I'd like to give honor to our pastors, Dr. Creflo and Pastor Taffy Dollar. Just amazing people, amazing in my life and I'm sure in your life. The, the man that opened our eyes up to the gospel of grace. And Pastor Taffy with her encouraging women to take their place and be valuable in the kingdom. Uh, we all just give them a big hand clap this morning. Amen. Um, as my sister was praying this morning, that's my baby sister, uh, Fat Leela Johnson, and she was praying this morning some things that stuck in my spirit. So I just want to pray for a couple of the people this morning. You don't have to come to the altar. You can just stand where you are, or if you want to come, you can come. But uh, I want to pray, pray for people because there's so many people suffering from mental stress. And this bogged down. Some, some of them had got, even gotten over the COVID um, spirit that was on us. And uh, I call it the spirit, uh, the COVID blues. We haven't gotten rid of the COVID blues yet. You know, we still have this little after effect. You know, we just don't know how to feel or how we should feel. But we know we're not feeling like we used to feel. And I want to pray for you this morning. So if that's anyone, you know, raise your hand. If you're online, you can raise your hand and I can pray for you there. Uh, there's no distance in, in prayer. Uh, if you're here th this morning and you're suffering from any men mental anxiety, you know, a lot of us are, are being uh, under attack with anxiety and panic attack. And if you are here this morning, I just want to pray for you. And if you'll raise your hand, uh, if you want to come to the altar, you can. But uh, if you just raise your hand where you are, it doesn't matter. It's, I just want to pray for you. God will reach you. Because we, I just think because we have heard so much word and so much gospel, to sometimes we underestimate Jesus. We underestimate his power. And he has the power to make change. He has the power to, the Bible says he's saved to the uttermost. So he, we have this power to operate in us. If you're here this morning and um, you're having any panic attacks, um, and I want to pray for untimely death over everybody this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to pray for before I pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, you that online, just hold your hands up as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your children. And you love them so much. You love them that you gave your son Jesus that died and rose and put power in the hands of the believer. Father, I just pray now that your body was broken, that they might be healed, and the healing power is began to flow through their bodies now, and your blood was shed for every spiritual, mental, emotional attacks in our body, that it brings healing, Father. I thank you right now, I bound the spirit of the COVID blues. I bound this, the leftover spirit of the blues and I cast him into the pits of hell where he belongs for mental frustration and mental pressure and, and, and just being lost. I cast that down and cast it into hell where it belongs. In the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus, anxiety, yes. panic attacks. I pray for them now in the matchless name of Jesus. In the matchless name of Jesus, we just pray for them. Just, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. It's moved and it's done now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed, be healed, be healed and made whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You love her, Lord, and you care for her, and you want everything perfect for her. I think you're doing something different and new in her life. Let her feel your power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your Holy Ghost, Father. In Jesus' name. 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 Let the Holy Ghost have his way. Let him just minister. Let him minister. This is what it's all about, ministry, getting people saved and healed. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for the caregivers this morning. Any caregivers? I know how caregivers feel, stressed out, undeserving, unloved, think they are not appreciated. If any caregivers here this morning, I want to pray for you this morning. If you're online this morning and, and through our social media, I want to pray for you this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all the caregivers. Let them know, Lord, that work and labor of love is not in vain. Even though other family members might feel like they're not doing their part, but, Lord, you didn't forget them. I thank you, Lord, you are caring for them right now. In the name of Jesus, nothing goes unnoticed or nothing goes unrewarded. You are not unjust to forget that work and labor love for your name's sake. And I pray to strengthen every caregiver, physically, emotionally, spiritually, Lord. And I pray for them today, Lord. I pray that those that are burdened down with financial debt, Lord, that, that you, will, you are making a way already. I pray for unexpected income. I pray for debt cancellation. I pray for bonuses, raises, whatever you have to do, Lord, whatever you have to do, Lord, to get them from the, under the bondage of debt. Lord, I pray for them now, Lord. You are God that care, you are God that love, and we cast our cares upon you this day, Lord. And we release the blessing, Lord. We release the same anointing that's on Pastor Dollar, the same anointing that's on Pastor Taffy. It flows through all the ministers here and, and, and they have the power to bind and to loose. And I loose a blessing upon you today. In Jesus' name. 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 It's time for us to see signs and wonders following the word. We preach the word all the time. Now there's a demonstration of that power. Lord, we pray, plead the blood of Jesus over our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, unborn great-grandchildren. For we say that they will serve you, Lord. They will share about your goodness, Lord. Lord, I know they are behaving a certain way, and Lord, I know they are doing things that they shouldn't do. But Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you will draw them in, Lord, that you will call them into the kingdom, Lord. And Lord, they will be preachers and ministers and psalmists, and they will serve you, Lord, and, and, and make this generation the generation that will usher you in, Father. I thank you for their lives, Lord. No hurt, no harm or danger, Lord, can stop them from fulfilling their destiny and their purpose 
and what they're being trained to do, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, Lord, now. And I thank you to have an open mind and an open heart to receive the message of grace, to receive the love, Lord. I bound that the spirit of the social media that influencing them in the wrong direction. And we bring every thought and every suggestion under the captivity of the Word of God, Father. I pray that today, Lord. I pray that today, Lord. I pray for the elderly. I pray that I pray I come up against dementia and all timers. I declare that we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have total recall in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can't come nigh me. Can't come nigh us. We are believers, and when we come together, there's a power that is being released in the name of Jesus. Set your people free, Lord. You said you come to set us free, and that that the Son set free, they are free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rashataron de Bokunne. Edna, come now. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship him. Let's just worship. Just worship. Blessed is your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Ah, Shato Rombo Neke. I have victory, victory, victory is mine today. We walk in victory today. We walk in victory today. We walk in victory today. Pastor Ken said, we win, we win, we win, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's anointing in this place. Oh, I sense the anointing so, so heavy this morning. Ah, oh, ba 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 ba. Ma 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 ma. Glory be your name, Jesus. Be your name, Jesus. I come up against the spirit of fear. I bound that spirit of fear. You are not having a heart attack. You don't have cancer. You don't have old Alzheimer's or dementia. You don't have no terminal disease. Not on this watch. Not on the watch of our pastors. You don't have. You will not have. No more untimely deaths. Sickness and disease touch your body. It dies instantly. No foreign objects can grow in your body. Only what God put in there can grow and prosper on the inside of you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. I wish I could sing, but that's not my anointed area. Uh, 
worship. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. You alone is worthy. You alone is worthy. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Amen. I said something about this already this morning, but Jesus is underestimated, and we don't put the value on Jesus that's due because he's done and is doing so much in our lives to sometimes we forget, and we forget where we come from. And I just want to talk about where we came from. Uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, Deuteronomy 28, um, I don't have it because I don't about my New Testament today. But in the Old Testament, Jesus said, if you are willing and obedient, okay. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently, diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which he commanded you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth. And, and he said he will set all this upon you on the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. Amen? Amen. 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 So, God gave this command that says you're willing and obedient. Now, he didn't give you an option. <laughs> he didn't give you an option to choose A or B. He said, this is a commandment, and you have to obey, and he will bless you in your obedience. So if you do good, Pastor Donald said, if you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. You do evil, you get evil. So that's what you get in return. Um, these terms of the old covenant, this is the, the terms of the old covenant in Deuteronomy. The first 15 verses are blessing. The first 15 words, uh, verses are blessing. And the next um, verses, starting in verse 16, 54 verses is full of cursings. So notice this, there's only 15 that bless, and then you'll curse the other 54 verses in Deuteronomy 28. So if, you, and it said, curse you shall be, and that's to include everything in your life, because he went on and on about the curses that will be upon your life. Amen? Amen. Out of the old covenant, you were only blessed if you kept all the law. Now, you have to keep all the law. Now, we have a hard time with the Big Ten. <laughs> Amen? We have a big trouble with the And then there's 631 other laws, rules, and regulations that man tacked on. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Uh, there are 613 other laws not counting the laws that the uh, different denominations put on and attached to it. You know, um, I was trying to think last night uh, about some of the laws that uh, man had put on. I know I came up Baptist, but I talked to a lot of folks in the Holiness Church. Amen? So I, I wrote something down that they told me. First of all, women couldn't wear makeup. I remember this one girl out of such bondage, she said, uh, she was going to a holiness church, and you know they hold all, they hold uh, all day. And she said from that morning service, they got out of service about 2 o'clock, and they had to be back for a 4 o'clock service. Somebody shaking their head. And she said she would go home and put makeup on and lipstick and everything and paint her face and sit there and just look at her mirror and smile. <laughs> 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 and, 
And then she says, she'll wash it all off and go back to the four o'clock service. Man, that's bondage. Somebody said bondage. Uh, and then they couldn't be stylish. Well, they could be stylish, their own style. Uh, dresses and skirts that went down to the ankles. And I, and I was talking to a good friend of mine, a, a pastor friend, his wife was telling me, said she was in college and taking physical education, taking PE, and she played volleyball and stuff with her long dress on. Somebody said bondage. Say bondage. Now you're not in it, you can say it loud. Bondage. Thank God you're free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God for the gospel. I'm free at last. Uh, now, now, this one is personal. And they said, they church, they could only wear cotton underwear. <laughs> so them were bloomers. <laughs> I will use another word, but they say I shouldn't use that word in church. <laughs> Big cotton bloomers. <laughs> A solvent. <laughs> Women was not allowed to preach. They was not allowed to preach. No deacons and no elders were women. And the pulpit were holy. You, I mean, you would get beat down if you walk in there. If you're a child, you got to beat down. Uh, uh, Deacon Leroy told me we were running across that pulpit, and man, I got a skinning when I got home. So y'all don't know nothing about the switch. I learned how to make decisions I learned how to make good decisions when I was young. Cause now I'm talking to a younger generation that may not know what I'm talking about. We would go out there and, and they said, go and get me a switch. Anybody who know what a switch is right here, everybody need to know. Everybody, okay, everybody here know. And you had to choose your own switch. So you didn't know, so you said, no, nah, she gonna, they'll kill me with this one. They said, Oh, they're going to make me get this one back. Oh, Lord. They're trying to find one in the middle, you know, one that wouldn't execute you. <laughs> and one not too heavy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. Let's see what else I got on here. Oh, right. And you couldn't play any cards. Any cards. Anybody know about that? Raise up. You couldn't play any cards. Uh, even, even Joker. What do they call it? The Jokers? Uh, and, and uh, what was it? Joker's Wild. Uh, couldn't play Spades. Couldn't play 21. That was Blackjack. Gin Rummy, you couldn't play. Uh, none of that. Just in bondage. And I, and I met, um, uh, when I met Doc Layton, uh, most of y'all know Doc Layton, he didn't even have, uh, uh, he didn't, they didn't even go to movies. Because you couldn't go to movies. And definitely couldn't smoke. But see, that didn't apply to the Baptist church. Because, see, we had a big tree next to our church, and all the deacons would be out there smoking before they came and led devotion. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Let's see what else I got on here. And communion. They did not understand communion. They did not understand communion because they would leave when it was time to do communion. They would leave out the church because it was time to do communion because they didn't understand what communion was all about. And if they knew and had understanding to what communion was all about, they would have ran to the communion table, taking it. Amen? Amen. Uh, and, I, and I remember uh, one time, I was a young preacher, just had started preaching, and uh, they had this table out there, you know, to do this in remembrance of me. That the, the, the communion table, which we never did do communion on in no way, but, uh, but it was that wooden table there. And I was preaching and I was walking on the floor. And man, I laid my holy Bible. I'm talking about the holy Bible, the living word of God. I laid it on a communion table. And my God, you thought that I cussed 10 times backwards. In five different languages, they thought I cussed. Because, man, they came up against me. Oh, man, they was going to put me out the church because I had put my Bible. Now, you talking about religion. That's why people didn't want to be saved because of religion. Amen. Religion was bad. 
and, and, and you know, the older preachers couldn't read. So, now this is a funny one. Um, this pastor wife told me, said they couldn't play marbles. Anybody know what marbles are? Raise your hand. God, oh, oh, I got a good crowd this morning, they know. Uh, she said, I said, well, why y'all couldn't play marbles? Because she said, the pastor said, marble not. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway, marvel not, y'all, marvel not. And, 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 and they couldn't even shoot marble because of the lack of understanding. And today we still have a lot of churches trying to live under the law trying to live according to the law of the Old Testament. Stop uh, try, trying to live under the law of the Old Testament. And knowing that that's frustration and disappointment. Because me with my bright self, you know, I'm thinking like, man, I can't do it right. I can't do that. So frustration comes in and people don't want to serve God because they don't know God like he, is, like he really is. They don't know the character of God. They have no personal relationship with him. And all these rules and regulation, they were structured to cause you to sin so that you know you needed a savior. Amen? It points towards sin to know that we need a Savior. And we still need a Savior today? Amen. I said, do we still need a Savior today? Amen. amen, amen. In the Old Testament, they had the uh, uh, five major offerings, which were the burnt offering, the peace offering, the meal offering, uh, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. And every year they would come to the priest and the priest had to be right himself. Because the priest wasn't right. Uh, and he went into the holy of the holy to offer up the sacrifice. I mean, he might fail dead in there. So people, uh, uh, they would tie a rope around his leg. And they would put a bell on his side. And as long as they heard that ding, 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 he was all right. But they heard ding. <laughs> he wasn't coming out. And they couldn't go in and get him because they would have failed dead too. And they had to pull him out uh, by that rope that they tied on his feet. So, man, we've come a long ways. I said, we've come a long ways. Thank God for, uh, for what we, how we, far we had come. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Hebrews 10, chapter, and the New Living Translation, please. Um, Hebrews 10, and uh, New Living Translation. Amen? That's the New King James Version. And I read that, okay. This, this is what they say about the Old Law or the, and the Old Testament. The Old System under the Law of Moses was only a shadow or a dim preview of the good things to come. Not the good things themselves, the sacrifices under the, that system was repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfection or ever, never made perfect cleansing from those who came to worship. And cleansing them who came to worship. So, and, and the New King James, it said, and stay right there, I want you to stay uh, with the New Living Translation. It said that consciousness of sin. That means they were always aware of their sin. So they never really experienced uh, religious freedom because they 
coming back, making this sacrifice and that sacrifice. So your mind was always, so soon as you finish this sacrifice, you had to start getting ready for the next sacrifice. And it was always aware, your conscious aware. Like I told you the uh, last time I talked about this Jesus factor, I had a conscious aware of sin. I know what I was going to do because I had a conscious aware of it. I was always aware of my sin. And, uh, and I would go to church on Sunday, but I was still aware of my sin. That's why I smoked, uh, f f rolled four joints a day before I went to work. Because I smoked one going, one at lunch, and one coming back. And oh, that's right, I forgot I had one for break. Uh, <laughs> because I was aware. But as I was aware of sin, Jesus, through his blood, made me aware of my righteousness. Oh, uh, y'all didn't hear me. I'm aware of my righteousness in Christ Jesus because Jesus came and set us free from the curse of the law. And I'm no longer cursed. I'm not no longer under the law, but I live by faith. I have grace by faith because I believe in the one who is grace, Jesus our Lord, who is grace. And it, it said that Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And it's accounted to me as righteousness today because I believe. And now I wake up in the morning with a hallelujah. I wake up in the morning and say, I will trust you, Lord. I will trust you, Lord. I wake up in the morning and say, uh, 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 I got victory. Victory is mine. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing? I, I wake up with talking about the goodness of God. I, I look for good things to happen to me all day. I look to be overtaken by God's goodness every day because I'm not out of the old system. The old system is dead. Now we got a new system and we can walk in our liberty and our freedom. Amen. Amen, somebody. It's good to be free. It's good to be you and can be free at the same time. Amen. Not not worried about hell, not worried about if I do bad, I get bad. If I do good, I get good. No, I'm not under that. I'm under the grace of God because Jesus done all the good for me and took all the bad away. Some people are not healed because they don't believe that Jesus loved them. But he so loved you. The, the, one of the basic scriptures in the Bible, if we read it correctly, it's God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just basic. Just basic. He loved. He didn't say he gave it to the church. He didn't say he came uh, for the believers. He said he came to those who would love him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved. Somebody say saved. Save. Somebody shout saved. Save. That the world might be saved through them. Amen. 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 And uh, verse 2. If they could have provided perfection, or being perf perfection, cleansing the sacrifice would have stopped. For the worshiper would, would have to purify once for all time, and their feelings are guilt who have disappeared. Now they're feeling and guilt. Do you, do you feel guilty this morning? No. You don't have to. Because he took the, all that guilt away. Amen. Amen. He took all that guilt away. Amen. Amen. This is something I wrote uh, last night. Let me see so can I read my own writing. The only book, the only book that diagnoses the problem of sin and its cure is the Bible. There are many self-help books that motivates, that encourage you to make you feel better. But none of them can take away your sin. There are many people trained 
to improve your life, but they can't give you eternal life. You can go to a psychiatrist, you can uh, speak all the philosophy you want to speak. There are life coaches, there are, uh, uh, there are coaches in sports, there are life coaches. They only deal with the fruit of sin. They only deal with the fruit of sin and life's problems. The Bible and its representative deal with the root of the problem. Amen. He deals with the root of the problem. Amen? Amen. The Jesus factor. That's a, see, the old system, the old testament, that was an old system that has faded away. Now we got a new system. I call it a uh, uh, game changer. The game changed with Jesus. So now you don't have to have the bulls and the goats and, 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 and bring them sacrifice. Pastor Donald said last week, don't be bringing no bulls up in here. If you want to live by the law, live by the law, but not up in here. <laughs> so so that's, a, that's been a game changer. At the cross, the game changed. Somebody say, at the cross, the, cross. the game changed. Amen. It's the Jesus factor. It's the Jesus factor. It's the Jesus factor. Factor is mean this, listen, one who acts for someone else, an agent. One who acts for someone else, an agent. Agent is defined, one empowered to act for or represent another. One empowered to act for or represent one another. Amen? Yes. Amen. So we have one called Jesus that acts on our behalf. Now, uh, I think it's the King James Version, uh, Hebrews 7 and 26. And, and, and if you can't get it fast enough, it's, it, it says, we have such a high priest that became us. We have such a high priest that became us who was holy and undefiled. Amen? That means he was sin free. Amen? He was sin free. So we have a high priest, such a high priest who have became us. So he was our substitute. So you don't have to pay for your sin because Jesus already paid for your sins. Now you think about how valuable that is because you think about all the sins that you committed. Just last week. I ain't talking about your whole life because we'll be in here to Jesus come back. Just, <laughs> just last week, you think about all the sins that you committed. And then he forgiven you of all those sins and you don't have to work for repentance. Because if we have to work for repentance, I mean, I just quit. Because I wouldn't, I'd be trying to pay back last year and I'm in this year. <laughs> and I'd be trying to keep on paying them. And yeah, you know how it is when you used to be broke? You know, you just get frustrated and then just don't pay nobody. Because <laughs> I, I ain't going to catch up no way. <laughs> so I'm just going to file bankruptcy. <laughs> Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. You, you been y'all the only one been we the only one been frustrated financially. Everybody who been frustrated financially way back then, yeah. And, and, and so you know you so frustrated you quit paying on it. But that's the way we would be if we had to work for our sins. We would just quit. Say, look, I'm going to hell anyway. Ain't only me trying to catch up. So I'm able to enjoy this thing. Hey, come on. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Y'all heard me talk about my life a whole lot, right? About how I used to smoke dope and, and drink and carouse and be crazy. Well, that, that one right there on the end right there, he was with me. I was Tonto, he was Cisco. <laughs> that, that was my road dog right there. He my brother, uh, best friend, <laughs> uh, road dog. <laughs> so I'm telling Trey. His name Trey for 
<laughs> but, 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 but you would give up. We would give up if we had to pay for it because we're not capable of paying for something. You don't, you don't keep on striving for something you can't reach. Disappointment, frustration comes in and you just stop. But Jesus, but the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, and it says that any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any child, anybody be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. God Almighty. Woo! It's like that old life, it never existed. You're like a newborn baby. You have no sin. You have, you're out of no bondage. You are free from it. Jesus has made you free from it. Amen. I say, Jesus made you free from it. That you don't have to pay it back. You just believe on him. Just believe on him. And he took our sins and put them in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. He put our sins just as far as east is from west and he remember them no more. I am a new creature in Christ. And then I have a blood-bought right for all the things that come with the kingdom. Now, y'all don't hear, I have a blood-bought right for everything that come with the kingdom. I have a blood-bought right to be happy. I have a blood-bought right to have a good marriage. I have a blood-bought right, come on, somebody, to prosper. I have a blood-bought right to be healed. I have a blood-bought right to be delivered. I have a blood-bought right to be free. And I have a blood-bought right to be called the son of the living God. Come on, somebody, talk to me in here. I have a blood-bought right. God has set me free from the curse. I'm a free man. I'm a free man. You are a free woman today because of what Jesus has done for us. I, I talked a message here at World Changes a long time ago. Jesus done done it. I know that's good English and all that, but Jesus done done it. Everything that need to be do, that we need to do, Jesus done it. All we have to do was believe. Are you hearing me today? Woo! Glory be to God. The devil is a lie. Glory be to God. The devil is a lie. He can't have anything that belongs to me. My children, my grandchildren, he cannot have them. They belong to the Lord. Amen. He said, if I get saved, my whole house will get saved. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Your child might be acting like baby, baby, they daddy today, but I'm telling you, I bound that spirit today and they're coming to the kingdom with gladness. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians. Amen. Are you getting anything out of this today? Second Corinthians 5. Listen at this. Death 17, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, old things pass away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are a God who has reconciled us, somebody said me. me, who has reconciled me to himself through Jesus Christ and has given what? Me the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses or in putting charge, not charging their sins or their trespasses to them and has committed to me, somebody say me, me. committed to me what? The word of reconciliation. Now then, now then, after God then got us ready, he said, and we can represent him. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God was pleading through us, we implore you on God's behalf, he recon be reconciled to God. Yes. Verse 21, very important. 
For he made him sin who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God in him. That we might be the righteousness of God in him. King James said he made us righteous. You did not make yourself righteous. So how in the world do you think you can make yourself unrighteous? Mm. Now that's a good thought, Bishop. Mm. You did not make yourself righteous. So you can't make yourself unrighteous. There's nothing you can do to make yourself unrighteous. Come on, come on, look. God made the sun, it's still working. He made the moon, it's still working. The earth is still here, it's still working. So he made you righteous. Why is it not still working? It's still working. And he didn't save you for a season. He saved you through eternity. So you are saved now, today, yesterday, and forever. You're going to be saved. Once saved, always saved. It's Jesus plus nothing. Jesus, Jesus don't add, no need no ingredients for your salvation. He ain't got no amendment, uh, uh, no, no, no amendments attached attach to uh, uh, your being made righteous and being saved. It's Jesus plus nothing. Somebody say that. Jesus plus nothing. One more time. Jesus plus nothing. With some volume. Jesus plus nothing. Jesus plus nothing. I hope y'all are getting something here online today because I'm having a good time. Amen? It's Jesus plus nothing. My time is about over with, so I'm going to uh, just uh, quote a few scriptures, and we're going to be finished. Um, Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, and I'll take time to read that so I can reinforce uh, what I'm saying. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave, listen, who gave himself for our sins. Who gave himself what? For what? For our sins. Sin, that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of God the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Acts 26. I want to read this. Acts 26. Amen. 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 Acts 26. That's the wrong scripture there. Well, Romans 5. I can do that one. <laughs> Romans 5, 6. Verse 6. Listen. For when we were still without strength, Listen to this. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would dare die, dare to die. God, listen to this. God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were still what? When we were still what? 
he demonstrated his own love toward us while we was yet sinners. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were, if we were in enemies, we were reconciled to God through his death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have now received reconciliation. That now we have received reconciliation. Amen? Amen. Uh, just take a deep breath and enjoy life. It's not that difficult when you got God on your side because he's still answering prayers. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still saved. And I'm going to say this one scripture and I'm really finished. It said, it, it, it said that he reconciled us to him. But before that, it said God demonstrated his own. He didn't send Elijah, Moses, Jeremiah. He didn't send no one else. He said, listen, he demonstrated his own love toward us that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. If he died for you while you was a sinner, how much more now that you're his child? How much more now that you're his child? There's nothing he will withhold from those that walk up rightly and live rightly. Just believing on him. I know it seems easy, but, it, but it's better that way than we're trying to repay him for what we've done. Amen. I love you guys. God bless you. Yeah. You get anything out of that? Yeah. Well, won't you give the Lord a big praise today? Come on, give God a big praise today. Amen. 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 If you got something uh, from that, let's complete our worship and our giving. Let's complete our worship and our giving. Amen. And we have several ways to give. It's uh, on the screen here. And we have several ways to give. Amen. We're so into that which we benefited from. And we are world changers. And the only way we can change the world is having the necessary resources to do so. And you play, pay a vital part in what we do around the world. Amen? You, so I pray that God return unto you with meet your every need and not only you receive a hundredfold of what you give but we are the body of Christ we receive a hundredfold of what the total that is taken today and you that means you got seed all around the world so you should have, have no lack because something is growing around the world at all times <laughs> amen 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 if you are not saved today and you would like to be saved, if you would just raise your hand or stand, please stand if you would like to be saved today. If you would like uh, to join this church, the greatest church on, in the world, the greatest church in the world. If you would like to join this church today, would you please stand? If you would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, would you please stand? Amen. 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 We have one standing today. We have our counselors here today. Amen. We have two. Amen. Amen. Do we have our counselors here today? Amen. I will see you after, right after we dismiss. Amen.
you are. Okay, see this young man right here. If you just go over there where he's at right now and amen. amen. Let us stand. Thank God for two souls. Thank God. Amen. Thank God for new members. Amen. Father, we just thank you for today. Father, I just ask that you revisit this teaching in their hearts of the believers as they leave here. As they lay down to sleep tonight, I pray that you give them night deposits, clear understanding, a revelation of their own, Lord. And I just thank you for it today, Lord. The word will not return unto us void, but it will accomplish what it sent out to do. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that everyone here is a magnet for all things good, that your mercy endure forever over their life. Oh, Lord, you are directing and guiding their footsteps. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, be dismissed in the liberty of the Lord. Amen. Amen.